Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Philosophy of Fitness podcast, episode number 53. My name is Haley. I'm going to be your host today, and every single day that you are tuning in, my friends, we are switching up the setup yet again. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll notice the lights behind me are a different color. I'm playing around with like red coral kinds of colors. I have a nice coral candle here. I'm kind of just feeling like switching up the color scheme of the set a little bit. So I certainly hope that you guys are enjoying this. It's a little vibe change. You know, it's just something different, something to um, kind of switch it up. So yeah, that is the situation there. I do want to let you guys know today we're going to be talking about divine masculine and feminine energy and how you can kind of balance the two of those within yourself. So if you are interested in learning about that, if you're interested in hearing about how you can balance those energies and sort of tap into yourself a little bit more, then you know what to do. Go ahead and stay tuned. All right, so I actually wanted to kind of share something with you guys first before we dive into today's topic. And that is meditation in general. I have spoken about this on my Instagram. If you guys don't follow me already, go ahead and follow me at I'm Haley Noel. I post a lot of stuff on there that's, you know, spiritual and esoteric and, you know, all kinds of mind body connection things. So I'll leave a link for that in the description. But um, I recently made a story kind of talking about my meditation experiences that I've had as of late. And I just wanted to kind of share with you guys, I guess, um, how deep my meditations have been able to go. And I think a big part of that is I have now increased the time that I meditate daily to about 40 minutes to an hour. And I know that that's not necessarily feasible for a lot of people, but I've noticed a huge transformation for me personally, receiving downloads during this time, uh, uh, visions, crazy insights also as well that um, I started journaling. I started writing down the things that I've experienced, um, the feelings that I've had. And so I'll kind of share with you guys just one experience that I had recently so you can kind of just get some perspective. So I do want to say also that I listen to healing frequencies as I'm meditating. So 528 hertz, 369 hertz. That one has been probably the most transformative for me. And that's the frequency of opening up your third eye. So um, I would definitely recommend maybe listening to some of that stuff. But what happened during one of my meditations was, um, oh my God, I feel like the lights just went dark in here. I guess it's just me. Um, so I'll kind of start by sharing my experience. So during one of my meditations in the last few weeks, I really felt such a strong sensation of loving energy emanating from my chest. And the only way that I could describe it was it was as if somebody had taken their hand and put it through my chest, but in the best possible way, like this felt good, this felt welcoming, this didn't feel like it was something that was scary or off-putting in any way. It was the best feeling ever, and I don't think I've ever had my heart had a feeling of that much love in it before, and it just, it just so took me by surprise, and it was so incredible. And the other cool thing that happened during that meditation is just pulsating all over my entire body. This is something that's happened to me many times before. And it's usually the precursor to like, I don't know if it's sleep paralysis or lucid dreaming, but it's the precursor to something that's a little bit more that I don't really ever have the courage to fully let myself go into. But it's almost as if when you're, when you're you know, laying down, you feel energy moving through your body. You can feel the vibration and it's not just, you know, feeling your heartbeat. It goes beyond that. It's literally a tingling sensation from head to toe. And that happened first. And then I had that, you know, overwhelming sensation of love kind of coming into my heart, which was so beautiful and and so amazing. So I do want to say also, I think that the more consistent you get with a meditative practice, the more likely it is that you're going to be having these kinds of experiences. Because if I miss a day of meditation or if I stop, you know, for a short amount of time, I feel a difference. And I also find that it's harder for me to get back into that flow state, to get back into that centered concentration of connecting with my breath and connecting with my body if I haven't been as good with keeping up with it. So my suggestion to you guys listening would be to be consistent with your meditation practice. You don't need to do an hour a day. Like I said, I understand that that's a lot, but just be consistent with it. And also if you receive downloads during your meditations, 
write them down. Write your experience down. I've received some incredible downloads and I'm journaling them, like I said. And it's awesome too because it just serves as a record for you to be able to look back and see kind of what you were experiencing at that time and what messages were were coming through to you at that particular point in time. So I think that it's really powerful to to journal that, you know, in itself. And I think journaling is also just super healing in and of itself, you know, writing down how you feel and being able to look back on that from from the future and 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 in any point of time really. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of, you know, tell you guys about that. That was really cool and like I said, my suggestion would be to listen to some healing frequencies if you're somebody that doesn't really like to do totally silent meditation. I'm one of those people that I still struggle with that. I find it actually more difficult to focus in dead silence than I do when there's something in the background, whether it be nature noises or any kind of noise. And I've always been that way, actually, since I was a kid, even with trying to fall asleep at night, I always have to keep my fan on. I always have to have something playing in the background. I find silence to be deafening in and of itself. I don't know if anyone else feels that way, but I certainly do. So Anyway, I hope you kind of gained something out of that. If you are into meditating or if you really haven't meditated yet, start now, start today. All you need is like five minutes. You don't need to know how to do anything. You literally just have to carve aside some space and time for yourself and just connect with your breath and connect with your body and take it from there. It's a slow journey. Obviously, it feels a little weird at first, especially if it's something you've never done before, but you will get into a flow and you'll get into a rhythm with it. So yeah, that is what I wanted to share. But now we will go ahead and dive into today's topic, which is masculine and feminine energy. So I do want to add a disclaimer before I dive into any of this, that when we're discussing this today, the masculine and the feminine energy, that this has absolutely nothing to do with someone's gender or with someone's sex. This is something completely separate from that. I am going to be discussing this with you from an energetic standpoint, so please don't get anything misconstrued or kind of lost in translation, right? This is solely speaking from an energetic standpoint, and every single human being on this planet has masculine and feminine energy. So I just kind of wanted to set that aside first and foremost to make that really clear. Now, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is I feel like I've seen on TikTok a lot of people talking about how men are becoming more feminine or masculine energy is is frowned upon. And I just, I feel like it's a hot topic right now, first and foremost. And second of all, I feel like there are a lot of misconceptions within, you know, understanding this from an energetic standpoint. So I'm going to do my best today to kind of clear some things up for you guys and also just share with you my perspective. So the masculine and the feminine energy. Like I said, it's something that exists within all of us, right? It's that yin and yang. It's the um, the polarity. It's the duality. Every single one of us has masculine energy and every single one of us has feminine energy. And the other thing that I want to say too is that there's no good or bad. Masculine energy is not inherently good or bad, and feminine energy is not inherently good or bad. It's really all about the balance, and it's all about how the two are connected. Now, I'm going to be focusing today on just that energy that exists within yourself. You can take that obviously beyond just the self, right, and how you show up in your relationships and in the world, and how in a relationship there's usually a balance, right, between the masculine and the feminine. That's not what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about you and how you can kind of balance that from within. So I have some uh, some notes here to kind of look back on. So we're basically, we're going to start with feminine energy because I feel like that's just a good place to start. So like I said, you know, there's a balance between the two. So when we think about feminine energy, we might automatically assume or associate that with women in our minds. This is not necessarily the case. Like I said, when you're looking at things from an energetic standpoint, you have to kind of strip gender expression out of the equation and gender really entirely. So feminine energy is really all about um, diving inward to me. I think that feminine energy is the ultimate expression of tapping into your intuition, being in tune with your emotions, being creative, um, and really just allowing yourself to feel. I think that feminine energy is all about that, right? It's just kind of allowing yourself to get into your feelings, to get into you where you're at. 
Um, It's gentle, it's nurturing, it's compassionate, it's empathetic. This is what feminine energy is in a nutshell to me. And I think that feminine energy can manifest itself in a lot of different ways. The biggest one, in my opinion, would be just like creative expression. So singing, dancing, creating art, um, also nurturing yourself. I think self-care is a, is a huge way that uh, feminine energy will manifest. So taking naps, you know, taking baths, um, really just kind of becoming in tune with yourself and allowing yourself to kind of just go with the flow as well. It's I'm going to get into the masculine energy later, but uh, a big part about feminine energy is just having the ability to kind of just exist and flow freely with what's going on. So you can think of feminine energy over on this side as that nurturing, compassionate, loving, loving towards the self, um, caring, right? And and really just, you know, uh, living authentically too. I think that's a big part of it. Like I said, creativity and self-expression. So um, when you're really tapped into your feminine energy and um, and you're really feeling in tune with that, you'll notice that you're going to be really feeling like you're connected to all the things that I said, you know, heightened intuition, creativity, wanting to express yourself, but also being able to hold space for others, being nurturing and being caring and being a great listener. These are all amazing qualities um, that feminine energy embodies. So yeah, that's, you know, kind of what the, what the big picture is with uh, feminine energy. So now we're going to move into masculine energy. And I think the simplest way to kind of break down the difference between masculine energy and feminine energy is that the masculine is more so about the doing part, right? Masculine energy is doing, it's showing up in the world, whereas the feminine energy is all about the being. Like I said before, existing in that state of creativity, heightened intuition, um, holding space for others. So when we think about masculine energy, we can think about that as sort of that go-getter kind of hustle mentality. So that's very grounded. It's very practical. It's very rooted in setting goals and getting after them, you know, focusing on on the end result of a project, very driven, very success motivated, um, really just like a, a strong drive, right? I think that a lot of what comes with masculine energy is also leadership, um, this ability to just lead, this ability to be decisive. Um, and I think that that's, that's something that's really big with um, masculine energy. Logic, like I said before, um, confidence is huge. And also just efficiency, you know, like I said, I feel like when I think of masculine energy, when I think of someone that's like really firm in their masculine energy, I almost think of that hustle mindset. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that in that go-getter headspace, right, of that leader that's like super driven. Um, so this is what we really feel when we're in the flow of our masculine energy. And when we're properly embodying our masculine energy, we feel like we're on top of things. We feel like we are, you know, getting after it really just, um, kind of setting the goals that we want for ourselves and doing the the things that we need to, to make them happen. So now we're going to kind of get into the, um, downsides or not really the downsides, but the thing is when, When one is off, right, when one is like not really where it should be or if the scale is kind of tipped way too much in the favor of the other, then that's where we can run into problems. Now, the probably the most simple example that I could give you is that when someone is too rooted in their masculine energy or there's too much masculine energy that's being embodied, that to me is essentially what's going to lead you to burnout, right? It's when you're really in that mode of just constantly showing up, constantly giving, constantly getting after it. And when we are too burnt out in that place, then we don't really have the time or we don't even have, you know, the energy to tap into that feminine side. And the feminine side is what allows the masculine to get to that successful point, right? Is because it balances, it allows to tap inward. It allows you to assess how you're feeling, to feel your healings, to feel it and then heal it from there. Um, You know, it's all about that balance between the two and how they are um, connected with each other. So um, if you, if you are too, you know, dominant in your masculine energy, you might feel as though obviously you're showing up in the world to the best of your ability, but you're not nurtured enough, you're not appreciated, you aren't valued enough. 
And that will manifest, like I said, with burnout, most likely, um, stress, overworking yourself, having a short fuse with people, right? It's all of these things that kind of add up to that. And I think such a big part of this, and it's unfortunately, I know we weren't going to be talking about, you know, gender and stuff with this, but I feel like men in our society now do have that pressure to show up in that way of constantly, you know, being on 100% of the time and, and always working and always striving towards the next thing. And I feel like society for years has also kind of spoon fed us this narrative that men, um, you know, shouldn't be vulnerable or shouldn't express their emotions as as they're viewed as like a sign of weakness, or at least they used to be. And that is so wrong. There's so much backward with that mindset. There's so much backward with that entire viewpoint. And I feel like hopefully now, you know, that that mindset and and that view is starting to change where we realize that vulnerability is really where our strength lies, right? It's not pushing this stuff down. It's not suppressing this and forcing yourself to show up until you're absolutely burnt out and you have nothing left to give. Like that is not the answer, right? So that's where that feminine energy comes in. So if you find that you're in this, you know, place of I feel like I'm doing too much. I feel like I'm overextending myself and I'm underappreciated. I'm undervalued. Then that's when you really need to just um, tune into yourself more, right? Is is express your emotion and and release it in whatever way kind of resonates um, for you. So now when, let's take the flip side of that. If you're somebody that's too dominant in your feminine energy, that's it's obviously really good to be in tune with your feminine energy for the reasons that I said above, right? Like being in tune with how you're feeling and being aware of that. Um, but when we get into this uh, dominant feminine energy, we sometimes can find ourselves in a place of feeling unstable, feeling a little bit scattered, feeling like we don't really have a clear vision, feeling a little bit lost, um, ungrounded. Like I said, masculine energy is is very grounded. So this could be like if you, if you kind of are just feeling like maybe you're stuck in life, um, this could be some, some manifestation of dispersed feminine energy that's really in an imbalance. Um, you could also feel lonely, right? You could feel a little bit sad. Um, it really, you can kind of just start to see that, that there's a connection between the two, right? It's the two different sides of us. It's the yin and the yang. Like I said, it's, it's the go-getter and it's also the, the, the inward seeker. And we all know that if we're too far in one direction, we're really not going to be getting the most out of our life and out of this human experience as we could if we found a way to balance the two. So this is why it's important for us to become aware of how we show up in the world, right? And aware of how our energy is showing up in the world. So you can even think about this now, you know, reflect on yourself. Um, do you find that you're somebody that's more tapped into your masculine energy? Are you someone that's, you know, always um, goal driven, always focused on making plans and on making purpose in the world and you're super driven? Or are you someone that's really into your feminine? Are you somebody that's, you know, always creating and, and dreaming and um, visualizing and just feeling your emotions? I mean, this is stuff that you can think about even you know, we're ever changing, right? It's it's not like we're just going to be stuck in one place forever. Everything flows. Even on a daily basis, everything flows. Like there's certain parts of, of my day where I feel like I'm super tuned into my feminine energy. When I have my morning routine in the morning, when I'm journaling and when I'm visualizing and um, going through my affirmations and manifesting and cleaning my room and lighting my candles, I feel like I'm really in tune with my feminine energy and I'm just allowing myself to flow. I'm allowing myself to feel. I'm allowing myself to dive inward. Whereas there's other parts of my day where I feel like I have to show up and really tap into my masculine energy. So like when I'm working out, for example, I know that I have a goal and I will do everything in my power to achieve that goal. So I will give every ounce I can for that workout. I will push through it. I'm super driven. I'm super focused. I'm not going to let any emotion or any distraction stop me. And that's kind of the the crazy thing about this, right? Is that it's not like you can just tell yourself, oh, okay, I'm 60% masculine energy and 40% feminine energy. Like that's not how it works at all, right? It's always flowing. It's always changing. And with the different stages of our lives and even the different seasons of our lives, the balance between these energies is going to change. So you may be at a particular set point now that works for you, or maybe it doesn't work for you. But in you know a few weeks, a few months from now, you could be somewhere completely different energetically. It all kind of depends you know what you're working towards 
what you're feeling, what you're going through, what your visions are, what your goals are, you know, all of this stuff can affect our energy as well. So that's kind of like the difference um, between the two. So I think now a great place to kind of, you know, how do you balance them, right? That's that's like the big question is how do we balance these energies? And there's a few different ways that I would say you could balance these. Um, for one, if you're someone that feels quite attuned to your feminine energy, you can take some time aside to meditate. Meditation is awesome. Journaling is powerful too. You know, writing and expressing your feelings, like I said, creating art, finding ways to express yourself that resonate with you that allow that energy to kind of move through you. Um, connecting with people around you, I think is really powerful too, because sometimes we can get very caught up in our own little cocoon of our inner world. So it's really powerful to connect with the people around you and to express yourself in that way. Um, and also to kind of allow yourself to plan. I know that that's something that's really popular or not popular, but it's really such a big part of the masculine energy is like the planning and the goals. Don't be afraid to make a plan or a goal. Um, having that vision and having something to work towards, I think will allow your feminine energy to find a bit more of a, of a, you know, sense of purpose. Whereas for the masculine energy, it's almost like the flip side of that coin, right? It's like the, the feminine needs a little bit of a, a balance to find its way to, to work towards a goal. Whereas the masculine, we need to kind of just take a step back and dive inward and allow ourselves to go there. So a big part of this, I think would just be finding the time to actually take care of yourself. So find the time to read, find time to do something that you enjoy, something that makes you feel good, something that is truly nurturing for your soul. You know, spend some time with a family member, catch up with a friend, do something that's not related to your goals, that's not related to your career, to whatever it is that you're working towards, and allow yourself to to really just have fun with it. Um, I think, you know, another thing for that would be to just be mindful of how you're scheduling things. Be mindful of not overextending yourself. You know, a big part of masculine energy, I think, too, is is having the capacity to set boundaries. So set boundaries with yourself. You know, put a hard stop time on, on when you're supposed to be working or set aside time for your family that you know you're not going to be distracted by anything else. You're not going to have your mind going to a thousand different places of of what you need to do. So yeah. And just allow yourself to have fun. I feel like that's such a big part of it too, is like when we're stuck in that hustle mindset, we almost forget to have fun, right? Like we forget to just enjoy this life and this experience that we have on this planet. So allow yourself to have fun. And I just, I want to leave you with this final thought. And that is like, don't ever feel bad about yourself for having too much masculine energy or too much feminine energy. Again, there's no good or bad. There's no right or wrong. I think the whole part of our journey of life is to try to find somewhat of a, of a balance between the two. And like I said, it's ever changing. It's never going to be the same and it's never going to be perfect. But life in itself isn't perfect, right? I mean, this human experience is imperfect in itself. So try your best to kind of just become aware of how you express yourself and how you show up at different parts of your day. And if you catch yourself in one extreme, think about what you can do to to pull it back to the other. Like I, the last few weeks have felt like I was really overextending myself and doing a bit too much and showing up for so many other people and and really just pushing myself too much in that goal getter mindset. And so that's how I knew like, hey, I need to take some time for me. I need to take some time to actually think about how I'm feeling, to journal through it, to meditate, to breathe, to to bring it back to myself. So you're not alone if you feel like you're at one extreme or the other. You know, this is this is all stuff that that we all go through. It's all a part of the human experience. Again, it doesn't matter who you are, what you look like. We all have this energetic makeup. So I certainly hope that you learned something from this today. I certainly hope that you're able to kind of balance your masculine and your feminine energy a little bit more, my friends. But thank you so much for tuning in. I just want to say a couple things. I made a TikTok, so go ahead and follow me on TikTok. I've been posting on there a lot. I'm Haley Noel. Uh, Same username over on Instagram, YouTube. Please give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed. Hit the subscribe button as well so that you don't miss out on more podcast episodes. And if you could leave me a review, that means the absolute world to me. It helps get to this podcast more eyes, more ears, and helps us grow this beautiful little community that we have here. So thank you all so much for listening. I love you. I'm sending you so much positive energy and I will see you next time. Bye.